Welcome to Purpose Driven Passive Profits. I am Nate Armstrong, CEO. I'm missing my partner in action, Steve Warner, but that's okay because we have an amazing show today. And today we get to talk about what Biden is planning to do to boost the housing market. And there's a good chance he's going to get his way. Check this out. So Mr. Biden, recognizing that home prices are incredibly high, wrecking that mortgage rates are super, super high. He's trying to feed in and keep this housing market alive. He's trying to get some CPR into it. And so his latest scheme that he's coming up with, this concoction, is almost a repeat of, you guys remember Mr. Barack Obama back in 2009, he was trying to rescue the housing market as well and give it some CPR. If you remember what he did back then, and you start to read what Joe Biden's policy is that he's he's pushing right now, you're gonna say, hold on a second here. Didn't we already do this? Because we have, <laughs> we have, we absolutely have. What's happening right now, Mr. Biden's trying to push is that if you buy a house, you will get a tax credit of five grand for two years, so 10 grand total. And that will offset you having to pay for a higher mortgage for your property. That's the theory, that's what's being pushed. That's, that's that. And I wanna go back in time and I actually pulled the history on what it did when Obama did this last time. And I wanna zoom in and pay special attention to when he did it. So the housing market was in a rough spot, to say the least. It was in a rough spot, to say the least. And what happened, the market was dropping, dropping, dropping. You can see here, we kind of peaked out 2007 officially on record. Some cities, it was 2006. 2007 was kind of the peak. And then it started dropping. It was like a falling knife. And nobody wanted to catch a falling knife. Like, are you going to reach your hand out and grab a falling knife or you just let it hit the floor? Well, it was a falling knife. And so Obama's move was this tax credit. It was 8,000 bucks. Joe Biden's is more. It's 10,000. But Obama's was 8,000. And what happened is it did lift the housing market right, right from right here to right here. Now, if I just zoom in on that spot right there, it looks pretty good. It's like, oh, wow. Boom. It worked. Yes, we're stimulated. But the reality is, is that right afterwards, it started to come down. It was actually April 2010 when it expired in my backyard. And I remember after it expired, I was buying, fixing and selling houses at the time. I was moving really fast, probably had anywhere from four to five flips at a time going on. And everything was selling right away because there was a stimulus on the backside. So like stuff moved, it, it stimulated the housing market, definitely did. And then when that stimulus ran out, the music stopped. Have you ever seen that game, that musical chairs where they're playing the music and then all of a sudden they pull out a chair and then they stop the music and then there's people scrambling and fighting over seats and then it just stops and it's total silence. That's what happened April 2010 when Obama's expired. So yes, it's, it's st stimulated things a little bit and then it just died. So what will happen with Joe Biden's? Well, there's a difference in timing. The big difference is this, that stimulus that Obama pulled out last time, he did it at the bottom of the market when the market had already fallen, it had already taken a big tumble. But Biden is trying to do it at the top of the market. What do you think is gonna happen with that? How do you think that will play out? What do you think will go on? The people that actually take that stimulus and buy at the top of the top of the top of the market, and then they take a stimulus and they buy, what do you think is bound to happen? Now, I don't have a crystal ball. Who knows? Maybe we'll go through stagflation and prices won't drop at all. Maybe they'll just keep going. I have my doubts. I, I feel that unemployment rates right now, they're being suppressed. And I think that there's a lot of people searching for jobs. And I think that we're only the, the snap of a finger away from seeing the unemployment rise, unemployment rate rise really fast. Remember last time it rose up by six percentage points. It went from 4% to 10% in 18 months. All that it took was a couple of big scares in the in the media, in the, the the greater economy of the United States, and all of a sudden it just happened. It got there. So I suspect what's going to happen is that we are um, we're heading for trouble if we take Biden's bailout package. If we take Biden's, it's not even a bailout. It's just to resuscitate the housing market. The, like I could understand if we were falling, 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 and then he comes in with the stimulus to try to boost it. But all that he's trying to do right now is prevent the fall. And I think what he's going to do is prolong the fall from happening by a little bit to probably get through what you got it. What's coming up in November? 
What's coming up in November? Yeah, elections. Probably to get through elections, and then I think the the, the band aid comes off, and then we actually go for through our tumble. I think that any president in office right now should be saving this move for the bottom of the housing market. That's my opinion. But again, I think a lot of decisions are driven for political purposes. And I think this is one of them that is being driven on that angle. I'd love to know what you think though. And from a real estate investor perspective, the safe play right now is the one that government can't meddle in or they can meddle in less. Right now they're meddling all over the single family housing market. It's part of the reason why I'm not buying any single families right now. And like with our background reputation and who we are like i love single family like we've done thousands of single family houses i love them but we're not doing them right now primarily because the government is pulling too many levers in the single family housing market i read a stat that over 70 percent of all fha mortgages and va mortgages right now cannot be foreclosed on because the biden administration through hud is preventing it why why are they doing that so that's 70% of people that are maybe potentially in default right now can't be foreclosed on. When are they gonna get foreclosed on? How long can that go on? Who's paying that bill? Is that a taxpayer coverage? Probably. I don't know for sure how the intricacies of that work, but that's probably what's happening. So whenever I look at this meddling of the government in the market, I know that eventually you're gonna run out of other people's money and you're gonna to have to pull the bandaid off. And then when that bandage ripped off, someone's gonna get hurt. I don't want to be the person getting hurt on a dropping single family house, especially if I can't rent it for high enough to cash flow with today's interest rates. It doesn't make any sense. I, I like to buy assets that I know I can cover the debt service, the taxes, the insurance in good times and in bad. And right now it's multi. Multifamily went through its cycle already. It hit bottom. It's already coming back up. Even Blackstone, the world's largest landlord, they said so themselves. John Gray, the president of real estate, he stepped up and said publicly that they hit bottom and now they're deploying $191 billion into multifamily assets. So I believe multifamily is the best place to park capital right now. If you are interested in doing something like that, you can always check out homeinvest.com to see what we're up to. Maybe we can partner together or go out there and find one for yourself. This is the once in a 20 year cycle. I was going to say lifetime, but the reality is this happened back in 2009 once. But once every 20 year type of cycle, opportunity to grab discounted multifamily property exists right now. So until next time, be a good steward with what God has given you. And we look forward to having you on the next episode with us. Thanks, God bless. Hi, accredited investors. Hey, I'm so excited. We got a new deal right now. It's a 46 unit building, brick, solid brick in the race horse capital of the world, Lexington, Kentucky. Rents on this thing, they're 15% below what the market rate is around it. I know because we own several buildings in the area. We're buying this one 15% less. To learn more, all you have to do is go to homeinvest.com or click on the description down below. Inside the description, you'll see a link down there. Remember, always consult with a tax advisor, a financial planner, or attorney before making any investment decisions. Having said all that, all you have to do is go to homeinvest.com or click on the link that you'll find down in the description down below. Thanks, God bless. Enjoy the show.